Hey, hello my dear friends. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to share you something very interesting and useful for the business. We are just going to design a compliance and a document expiry tracker using Excel VBA. Uh, so you don't require any fancy tools or anything uh, like that. Let me first of all show you what we are going to design in this tutorial. So it will be easy for you to understand. Let's go. Here you can see that I have the document uh, file, Excel file that is named as a compliance and document expiry tracker. You can see the heading. One of the button is there and the records are saved in the form of name, document type, document number, issue date, expiry date, days left, status and alert. And the last column is open document. So you can directly open the file from here. Okay. And uh, the catch is over here where you can serialize the document based on that document type. For example, if it is a Word document, you can see the serial number is one, two and three. If it is a PowerPoint, it starts with a one. OK, so for example, if I select and this is the form that we are going to design soon. And if you select a particular file, for example, let's take a PowerPoint of uh, safety. OK, and if I click OK, you can see that the serial number is getting from second row. OK, and here we have a provision to provide the expiry period based on the value. So in case if it is a first, then you can see the expiry comes on the 15th. So let's and when we click over here, you can see the record is added to this and the form get closed. You can see automatically it indicates the green mark. And in case, for example, uh, for just purpose that expiry is the third. OK, I'm just changing intentionally over here. So it is in a March. So it will automatically show that it is heading expired. And in case if it is nearby the date, for example, 4th and the date, let's take it 11, then it will, oh, sorry, it is getting expired. So let it take a 21st. Okay, so it will show the expiry soon and the alert will be the yellow mark. Let's see how we can design this together. We are with the new sheet right now and just I have copied the content uh, of the layout of this sheet uh, for the data and in we are going to visual basic and you can see the user form is there. I have just copied this user form and if we run the code window editor, you can see we don't have any code here. We are just going to code uh, together for this. OK, and first of all, let me uh, introduce, uh, let me tell you about the form. First of all, uh, these are the labels uh, that are showing the color and uh, these are the text fields uh, named as a TXT file path. This is the browse button that will allow us to select, uh, get a dialog box to select a file. These are the text boxes named as a TXT name. This is the combo box, CMB type. TXT doc number, TXT issue, TXT uh, period, uh, sorry, CMB period, and TXT expire. Okay, and this is the save button that is going to save our data to the Excel sheet. Okay, and this is simple image over here for uh, beautification. Okay, let's first of all, uh, if we run this program, for example, you can see that uh, nothing is in our drop down. So first of all, we will work on this and then after we will create this browse functionality. OK, so let's see how we can add the value over here. So in the user form initialization, you need the uh, event initialization. OK, I'm just going to add few rows that are going to help to append the value in the combo box like this. OK, so here CMB type that is our combo box type. It will have PDF, Word, Excel, image, PowerPoint, zip, text or a custom. Custom in the sense other than this file. OK, and for the period we are making like one month, three months, six, one, two, three, five years and anything. You can change accordingly as you need. OK, if we run this form right now, you can see that we have the drop down values now. So next is we need to click on the browse button and it should pop up for the file selection. So here we are just going to write our uh, dialog box related to. I'm just writing FD as file dialog and set FD 
equal to application dot file dialog and we are just going to select mso file dialog file picker okay this is going to help us to select only a file and to show that value i can write f d dot show here it is going to just open a dialog box and it is saying that select a document so here we can select the document so now if we select a file we need to segregate everything okay file name document type document number document number will be the later one uh, issue date let's put issue date as a today's date first of all so on the initialization let's write over here on the initialization we can say txt issue dot value because we have put the name right and i'm just going to format this so it will help us to see in a proper way i'm just going to put it as a dd ml by okay so when we run here it should automatically have the date so next step will be we just select the one month or a six or something it will automatically prompt the rest of the data okay now let's go with the browse functionality and i'm just going to paste this code and let me explain you here we have already uh, initialized the variable so under the with block i'm just putting the title select a document allow multi-select as a false because we want only one file to be selected at one time filters as a clear no filter is required you can see that it will allow over here if you right away you can see no filter this is the filter okay so just to avoid that filter value we are saying clear and we are adding a filter of all files because we can select more than uh, one type of file right not only the excel or word or powerpoint or a pdf we can select any of the file okay next we are showing if it is uh, if the dialog box is not open then we are going to open the dialog box and going to select the file so the file path is going to be in this value whatever the file is selected the file path will be prompted here next we are extracting the extensions and all that so we can have the document type clear with us first of all we are extracting the name to put that value in the txt name block for this next we are extracting the extension so we can automatically allow the selection in the uh, cmb type okay here in case if it is a pdf the file extension is pdf then let's select the uh, cmb type pdf the same with the excel word powerpoint and all that and you can see that i have just put in a colon for same line item if you don't put the colon you will need to put it in the next book okay both things are same if you want to continue in the same line then you need to put a colon beside that okay so like this we are just put a switch case over here and this is going to update our combo box value and last is uh, txt issue date the same date for me whatever we are selected okay i'm just going to run and just show you uh, one of the file for example annexure if we select the annexure file annexure is getting separated the file name extension based on the extension switch case is going to help us to say that it is an excel file or a word file or anything else we have already the issue date right now if we select this one it should change this value okay now let's work on this expiry date for this we are just going to check the value first of all if the file path is not empty that means something is there then only we need to validate the expiry date okay and we are converting the issue date as a date check that it is a date there if it is a date then only we need to post it further if it is not the date because uh, it is a text box right if somebody writes this it is a not a valid date so that's why we are just validating it with this yeah over here that if it is a date or not if it is a date we are just assigning a variable value issue date this one the whatever the date is right next we need to extend the month and the year with this so i am just using a simple uh, date add function over here by the month or by the year and based on this we are just returning the next month or whatever the month or a year is selected based on that we are getting the date okay 
and this is the function that is going to help us. So let's put for example 15.4 and I am putting one month then it should prompt here to why not we did in this right oh, file name is not selected sorry yeah I can change the month but file name is not there that's why let's select one moving okay and then after if I select this yeah it is working fine right three months six months or even five years okay everything is working fine what is next we need to update this document number here is the subroutine okay let me show you uh, named as a general uh, generate document number and we are reading the tracker file these are the variables that we need to use in this first of all let's see if combo type is blank then exit sub we don't want to proceed further because if the type is not there then if it is there then we need to check it has a valid value it is a not blank so there is the code or uh, short code that is going to help us to create the document number last row to find out the last value in the excel sheet and we are just looping through it reading the document code in that and if the document code is found then we are initializing the serial count to serialize the number okay at the end of the loop we have a serialized number and we are adding plus one to that because we already have for example three word documents were there so this is going to be the fourth one and this is the format of document that is a document type for example pdf dash year month dash and whatever the serial number is generated we are leading with a 00100200003 and so on. okay and putting that value in the doc number so let's see if it is working fine uh, let's see downloading okay uh, we have the expiry period and the document type to also so, so based on this for example in this change if we call this function so it comes automatically this got changed okay uh, so document type change is done let's move next what is the thing last is the remaining that we have selected the file and all the data are there if we change the value and everything now last item is save so let's work on this now and to save the data it is going to be a very simple that we just want to put whatever it is in the field value we are just going to add that value in this particular thing so let's go there okay this is the code that we are going to use in this save functionality you might have already seen my previous videos that where we can save the data from the user form it is a very much straightforward uh, we have just uh, read the tracker file initializing the row from the fourth position because uh, on the top we have added the header and all that so initial four rows we do we are not going to use it we are going to start with the fifth row so for that i will just create a variable initial row as a four okay so ignore the first four value and then start the input now last row is going to find the last empty cell for this it is plus one that's why and here we are also adding a validation where if value is blank we need to forcefully ask user to fill the detail first of all before going proceeding further now next is we are creating first of all id or a serial number we can say serial number because it looks better okay uh, last row that is whatever the last empty row and the first value start position so for example it is a five fifth position the five minus two is one so serial number is going to start with a one with this line main value that is the input value the second third fourth and all the columns are going to have a value from the user form text name combo box type document number here we are calculating few three columns because this many row items are going to be count from the user form but rest of this four columns needs some calculation so this calculation is like 
For example, I have added, uh, created two variables, issue date and expiry date, and converting them in a date format first of all, and then after over here, we are adding a formula based on this value. If the last value, whatever the issue date is, minus today's date, oh sorry, expiry date, whatever the expiry date is, needs to be minus with the today's date. And whatever the numeric value comes out, it will be shown as a days left. These are the columns that are uh, dependent on one another. Second, for the status also, we are providing if it is in a positive and greater than 30 days, then we are going to say it is a valid. If it is under 30 days, then we are just going to say expiring soon. And if it is in negative, then it is expired. Same formula we have applied, but putting the value as a minus one, zero, and one. And we are using icon set form conditional formatting to show the uh, red, yellow, green icons. And the last is hyperlink where we want the file to be open on a click. So we are adding the hyperlink content in that sheet. Display title is open file, and this is the address, this href value for this. And where we are going to put this value in the last row, whatever the last row is in the tenth column. Okay, and then after data is saved. So if we run this from here, I select the file, I select the period and save. It should automatically save the data. That's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful and maybe even something you can use in your day-to-day -day work or apply to a project you are working on. If you liked it, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. It really helps the channel to grow. Also, if you have any specific project in mind that you would like me to design and showcase as a tutorial, just drop me in the comment below. I love to hear your ideas. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.